The Miami Hurricanes took a big step forward during the early signing period, but here are the next targets and objectives that Mario Cristobal needs to address. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hope everyone had a Merry Christmas and you're having an awesome holiday season. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. Yeah, we're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. So where do the Miami hurricanes go from here? Now that they've locked in, you know, 25 class of 2023 signees, where do we turn our attention to next? Because as we've discussed on this show, Recruiting never stops, right? I mean, you're you know you're already looking years in advance and weeks and months in advance in recruiting. So, uh, if I'm going to go like in order of importance, I see Mario Cristobal and company. Their next objective now, because this saga is still not over, Miami is going to look to get the Cormani McLean signing over the finish line on February first. So Corvani McLean, he was the shocker. He was the curveball this past Wednesday on early signing day. He's been a Miami verbal commit since October 27th. And guys, there are so many rumors out there and so much smoke as to why the five-star cornerback out of Lakeland hasn't signed a national letter of intent yet. Now, depending on who you talk to, Some people will tell you, don't even worry about it. Cormani's going to be a cane. You know, they're working through some of the academic things and the paperwork. Don't even worry about it. Others will tell you, hey, everyone's coming for this guy. Now, I will say this. Whether or not you think McLean is going to be a cane and he's rock solid, you know, we've got a little over a month here where no matter whether you think he's solid or I think he's solid to Miami, you better believe Deion Sanders in Colorado will be recruiting him hard for the next month plus. G5 Billy, if he gets any time out of that locker that Mario stuffed him into, and the Gators will be recruiting him hard for the next month plus. I'm sure Alabama and others will as well. So the fact that he's not signed the national letter of intent yet, no matter how you think this situation is going to resolve, there's going to be recruiting happening towards Cormani from all angles We'll see if Miami can get this one over the finish line, but that's going to be a priority. Getting the Cormani McLean signing over the finish line has got to be a big time priority for this staff. And outside of McLean, national signing period was a huge success for Miami. Every other Miami verbal commit signed on Wednesday, plus Miami added Damari Brown to their class, who's an awesome four star defensive back. And hey, if McLean doesn't end up being a hurricane, be very thankful you signed Damari Brown, who's an incredible player at that same position. Um, and the Hurricanes also managed to add an Australian punter in Dylan Joyce to replace Lou Headley because Lou finally ran out of eligibility. So the early signing period was a big success for Miami, but it didn't fill every need, right? Despite adding over two dozen quality players, and Miami's also made four transfer portal additions already, which have all been quality additions, especially JV on Cohen right at the top of that list, the offensive lineman from Alabama. The Hurricanes, despite doing a nice job in recruiting and doing a good job so far in the transfer portal, Miami still has needs to fill. And we look now to the transfer portal to hopefully be the way to fill that next need because the Hurricanes, guys, we desperately need to lock down an outside wide receiver in the portal. The Canes have already missed on targets. You know, you talk about some of the 6'4", 6'5", receivers Miami has missed out on in recruiting and in the portal. So the player that I'm looking at, and I think this is the guy Miami has the best chance with in the portal, is former Oregon Duck Dante Thornton. You've got to hope Thornton picks Miami. Former Oregon receiver who Mario Cristobal recruited, six foot five, around 200 pounds. 
he actually had his most productive out of two seasons at Oregon. Dante Thornton's most productive season was the first year as a true freshman under Mario Cristobal. So, you know, we need help there. We need more at outside wide receiver because Miami's been crushing it in the slot, okay? Miami does need more help, folks, at defensive tackle. I was very happy to see Joshua Horton as a true freshman. He's coming in in the class of 2023. And I'm also quite thrilled that Miami landed Thomas Gore from Georgia State in the transfer portal. Something I hadn't even realized this about Thomas Gore. I knew this was obviously a very productive player at Georgia State. He's at the uh, at the group of five. He's put up just gigantic stats in the Sun Belt. Uh, but I didn't even realize this about Gore. Uh, this uh, courtesy of uh, my buddy Alan at Kane's Warning posted this. Did you know that Thomas Gore, to this point, is the highest rated defensive tackle in the transfer portal so far and the 22nd ranked overall player? So listen, um, there hasn't been like an abundance of quality defensive tackles available in the portal. You know, still more guys can enter the portal between now and January 19th. So Miami actually landed the highest ranked defensive tackle in the transfer portal to this point. He's got very good stats and numbers through pro football focus. Um, so far at Georgia State, where he just left, Gore had 94 tackles, 21 and a half tackles for loss, 11 sacks, two forced fumbles. He's been one of the highest graded interior defensive linemen in the country over the last two years. Now, most of the players that Miami has brought in through the portal to this point have at least two years of eligibility left. Gore, I believe, only has one left. So this is – Thomas Gore is not going to be a long-term project. This is going to be, you know, a one-year plug a hole, and hopefully he has a nice season uh, at Miami. So you still obviously – you need more in the future. You want to try and recruit more defensive tackles. We'll see if anyone can be had on February 1st. And I still think you'd like to get more defensive tackle in the portal. If you can find a quality player in the portal who's got two or three more years of eligibility, uh, I would hope Miami would jump at that opportunity. Now, uh, other possibilities, because a lot of people are asking us, hey, you know, who's going to be available in February on early signing day or late signing day, I should say, February 1st. Um, now, I will tell you that the top available unsigned player will have a University of Miami hat on his table, among four others. So you have to watch out because a lot can change between December 26th and February 1st. A lot can change between now and then. So I'm definitely going to be looking at five-star athlete Nicholas Harbor out of Washington, D.C., he is unsigned. He's made it clear since the fall that he wasn't going to sign anywhere until late signing day on February 1st. This is an elite track athlete who ran the 100-meter dash in 10.21 seconds. That's almost Olympic caliber. He's going to be choosing between Maryland, which is the hometown team for him, Michigan, LSU, USC, and Miami. So Miami will have a hat on the table. Now, I will say... As of late December with Nicholas Harbor, who's more he projects to play either, and he uh, he's listed as an athlete, so he, he has options, but he could play edge rusher. Miami's pretty loaded there. He could play tight end. Miami's pretty loaded there. Jumbo wide receiver. Hmm. Could Miami use some help with a big, tall outside wide receiver? Harbor is six foot five, and he's fast as, you know, you can't even imagine how fast this guy is. Uh, he's about 245, I think, 240, 245 pounds. I'd love to have him here now. I will say, to be fair, late December, Miami has very little buzz for Nicholas Harbor, despite getting a hat on the table. It sounds like uh, the Big Ten schools have the most buzz for Harbor right now. But again, a lot can change between now and February. And I will say that if, and I'm not saying I want this to happen, but if things fall apart between now and February with Cormani McLean, remember, you could see the NIL money that was allocated to Cormani McLean. If he doesn't end up coming to Miami, that money can get packaged for someone else or for multiple other players like Nicholas Harbor instead. Okay, so a lot can happen between now and February 1st. So those to me are the next steps between now and February for Miami. You really need to hit the trip. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. <coughs> I'm dying over here. <laughs> I'm dying over here. Way too much, uh, way too many sweets and like too much yelling at family members 
on Christmas. That's how Italian Christmases go. You're like yelling at your relatives, pass the panettone, pass, uh, pass the limoncello. It's, it was a crazy couple of days over here at the Dono household. So I, I'm still trying to get my voice back a little bit from last week. But yeah, you got to hit the transfer portal hard. I think Miami needs more help even beyond Thomas Gore at defensive tackle. You definitely need help at outside wide receiver. Try to get somebody with some height and some length to grab those contested balls. And when we come back, folks, we are going to open it up to Q&A. We've got some awesome questions already on class of 2024 targets, which I love. We had an amazing question on what the starting offensive line could look like next season for Miami because Miami looks pretty loaded now. And could coaching changes happen or are coaching changes, you know, it, at Miami coordinators? Is that out of the picture now? We will discuss that and more here on Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. But I want to talk about the amazing work being done at LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Guys, I have found jobs through LinkedIn Jobs before. So if you are an employer, you put your jobs out there, people will take notice. You add the purple hiring hashtag frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Then simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It is why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to and faster. So post your job for free. What are you waiting for? Post it for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Let me take a swig here so I make sure I don't lose my voice. Ah, okay. Hope everyone had an awesome Christmas once again. My my son, uh, my four-year-old, we gave him a uh, like a whole Miami Dolphins jersey, shoulder pads, helmet. Oh, he freaking loves it. I'm going to try. If anyone, by the way, if anyone has a hot tip on where I can find like a kid's like full Miami Hurricanes uniform, let me know because that was tougher to find than the Dolphins stuff. So I would love to hook my kid up for his birthday in a couple months with some University of Miami gear. I would love to hook you guys up with answers to your questions, okay? You can tweet the show at Locked on Canes. And if you follow us at Locked on Canes, we will follow you back. And if you got a question for us, a comment for us, you'd like answering on a future podcast, make sure to tweet us at Locked on Canes. Uh, we ended up getting a lot of questions for today. And if I don't answer your question today, we could still answer it on a future episode because we got a lot today. And I tend to be a little bit long-winded. Uh, Dave Faber asked us, how are we looking in recruiting for the class of 2024? He said, I'd love to get at least one of the Shamanad wide receivers. Well, David, I'm glad you asked that question today because I'm already looking at the class of 2024, right? Mario never stops recruiting. I never stop studying the recruits available. Uh, when you talk about the Shamanad receivers, the two very coveted Shamadon, Shamanad Madonna wide receivers are Jeremiah Smith and JoJo Trader. Now, I'm going to assume Miami has a better shot at JoJo Trader since Smith <coughs> over the weekend. Jeremiah Smith already committed to Ohio State. <laughs> Brian Hartline is like Thanos. He just he gets them all, all the Infinity Stones, all the receivers. Hartline is an incredible recruiter. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure Miami is going to keep recruiting and trying to flip Jeremiah Smith until the very end before, you know, a year from now, the early signing period. Uh, but as far as Jojo Trader, who's still uncommitted, he just finished his junior season at Chaminade with 747 receiving yards, seven touchdowns. He's six foot two, two seven, sorry, six foot two, 170, 270. I doubt he's still a wide receiver. He's six foot two, 170 right now. Now, for the class of 2024, Miami only has one verbal commit to this point, and it's the top place kicker in the entire country. Abram Murray out of Shreveport, Louisiana, top kicker in the class. He is verbally committed to Miami. 
other players Miami's looking at. Miami is seriously recruiting a lot of IMG Academy guys. Let's start with David Stone. So David Stone, five-star defensive tackle out of IMG, six foot four, 270. Now that's as a junior in high school. So he's going to get even bigger, you know, within the next year, I'm sure. Uh, now David Stone, he's originally from Oklahoma. So obviously the Sooners are going to go very hard for this one. Uh, Miami's got to be in a good place right now because they've been showing Stone love for a really, really long time. I believe he's visited before and he's got a bunch of teammates uh, from IMG that are on their way to Miami. Like I'm sure he knows Maui Goa <clears throat> and Antonio Tripp and Riley Williams and the whole, the whole IMG gang. He's very close and familiar with these guys. So hopefully they've been in his ear recruiting him towards the University of Miami. So definitely keep an eye out on uh, on David Stone. Another IMG D lineman that Miami is interested in, Ernest Willer. He's six foot four, 250. He's a four star. Uh, so Stone's a five star. Willer is a four star. Uh, Miami's also been recruiting IMG offensive lineman Jimothy Lewis. He's six foot five, 290, an absolute stud. I think he's a four star as well right now. Um, now, elsewhere, outside of IMG Academy, player I'm keeping my eyes on, we go to the quarterback position, which is obviously very exciting. Uh, you know, Miami's got Emory Williams coming in this class. They lost Jaden Rashada from this class, but I think Miami is now going to put quarterback on the back burner until next year. 2024, yes, Miami's going to be recruiting quarterbacks. Keep your eyes on quarterback Air Nolan. First of all, Air what a perfect name for a quarterback. Air Noland is out of Langston Hughes High School in Georgia. Now, if the name of that high school sounds familiar, it should. Miami's building a good relationship with Langston Hughes now after just landing Noland's teammate, Joshua Horton, the defensive tackle. Now, Air Noland, a quarterback, four star quarterback, six foot four, 195 pounds, and he just led his team to a state championship threw for over 4,000 yards, and he threw for 55 touchdowns this past year. So this is a guy I would love to have, all right? Now, another player that I'm looking at, um, class of 2024, there is an elite defensive end from Mario Cristobal's alma mater, Columbus, and that's TJ Capers. TJ Capers is a five-star recruit, seventh-ranked player in the entire class of 2024. He goes to Cristobal's old high school, which you know Mario is going to be recruiting very, very hard. So I wonder if Columbus Explorer TJ Capers could end up being a Miami Hurricane. He is one of the very, very top players in that class. So, um, yeah, and obviously you guys know within the next 12 months, we're going to be talking plenty about class of 2024 prospects. And I want to thank, uh, who was it? Dave for asking that question about the 2024s. Uh, Omar Bell asks us, does it appear that Miami will get any more high school commits or signees, or is every player from here on out coming out of the transfer portal? Uh, I would always say you never know, uh, you know, and, and if you count Cormani because Cormani McLean is unsigned, uh, that's obviously one Miami wants to get over the finish line. I mentioned uh, Nicholas Harbor as a possibility. Miami is not favored for him, but they do have a hat on the table. And then outside of that, man, you never know. Maybe later on over the next few weeks, we'll look at like the full list of, of unsigned players heading into February. Uh, but when you when Cristobal is your head coach, you can always uh, expect some surprises, right? Anybody who's not signed a national letter of intent yet is up for grabs. He's going to try and get some surprise signings or surprise flips in early February. Believe me, Cristobal is going to try for that. Uh, other than that, though, you know, I expect the transfer portal to get pretty busy. I think Miami's probably going to add, you know, at least another. They're going to try to add maybe another half dozen in the portal, right? They've only got four incoming players to the transfer portal by now. There's still needs to fill and all that. So I love it. Um, okay, we got a question about offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators. Oh, somebody wants me to make a prediction for next year. We got a question about the offensive line. So, man, folks, you want to keep it locked right here. We ain't done yet. We're not done yet on this Boxing Day edition, this day after Christmas edition of Locked on Canes. Guys. I hope you're using the services available to you. 
at betonline.net. BetOnline is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. So many bowl games going on, so much NFL going on. Guys, get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to bowl season, basketball, NHL hockey. We've got it all at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, yeah, you can find those as well at Bet Online. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're part of the awesome Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, let's see. Uh, we get a question from from giant ninja who says what are the chances of bringing in both a new offensive coordinator and a new defensive coordinator he says i personally think there's not too much to be excited about unless you're a fan of a boring offense or a fan of the number 40 i think he's talking about when he says the number 40 i think he means like the number of points given up on defense he says i believe if we want to see uh, not only better, but different results then. Um, and then he leaves it with an ellipsis, like off into off into mystery. Um, now, obviously, to this point, guys, late December, uh, we just finished early signing period a couple days ago. Miami has not made any coaching changes at all to this point. Um, now, I will say heading into 2023, there is a 0% chance that the staff is going to look completely identical next year. Like, there's going to be some changes made. Now, to this point, remember, remember who your head coach is, Mario Cristobal. He is an absolute madman when it comes to recruiting. Recruiting has been Mario's only priority since the season ended, so about the last month. So I think staff changes can and will happen, and they're probably going to happen in February because Cristobal has the reputation of not rushing these things, right? I mean, even last year when Josh Gaddis was hired, it happened, I, I want to say it happened in mid-February, if I'm not mistaken. Like, it happened pretty late in the process when they got their offensive coordinator for last year. So, uh, and I'm not saying that for sure both coordinators are going to be gone, but I definitely think there's a chance. Um, I've heard a lot of rumblings on that on both sides. You know, there there has been some buzz linking Josh Gaddis to Iowa, and I don't think Iowa has made any sort of uh, big updates to their offensive coaching staff, so that could still be a possibility out there. I've also heard some rumblings that maybe Kevin Steele won't be back next year. I think if you were to pull the Miami Hurricanes football fans, if they could only replace one coordinator, they would probably choose to replace the offensive coordinator long before they would replace the defensive coordinator. Uh, and let's also remember, when you're talking about hiring replacements, um, I would imagine that when Mario Cristobal, if he is going to be looking at, hypothetically, if he is going to be looking at a new offensive coordinator, he would probably want to do his due diligence and interview some coordinators or some you know, assistant coaches who are currently in the NFL. And you can't really do that until the regular season is over in a couple of weeks. So he might be in no rush because he wants to, you know, when he's conducting all of his interviews, he may want to include some people who are on NFL coaching staffs right now, maybe a quarterback's coach or, you know, a, you know, a, a running, running backs coach at another, you know, at an NFL team. And he wants to interview them for an OC job. So that, that can't really happen until a couple of weeks from now anyway. So just because nothing's happened yet doesn't mean nothing's going to happen because believe me, this head coach and this front office, you know, Alonzo Highsmith on down, they have been prioritizing recruiting over anything else at this point. So if staff changes are going to happen, they could happen at any point soon. All right. Nick Green asks us, what are your realistic expectations for next year? He says, mine is eight and four at best. Still have some deficiencies on the roster that we need to take care of our schedule next year is going to be tough going uh to florida state and to notre dame and to clemson all right guys uh for those who watch every day or listen every day you know what my policy is right now on predictions i'm not making any record predictions right now i I sounded like an idiot last year like an absolute moron when i'm talking about nine ten wins before last season i 
I'm not going to make any sort of a win-loss prediction, at least until we're like into fall camp, okay? And I know who all the transfer portal arrivals are, you know, who's healthy coming out of fall camp. So it's way too early for me to make win-loss predictions. I just want to win more games than last year. <laughs> and I want to see progress from the freshmen and the sophomores on the team. I want to see progress from the players that Mario Cristobal recruited. That's my big thing. Like before, long before I give you any win-loss numbers, obviously I want to win at least one more game than last year, at least one more. And I want to see progress from the young players that will hopefully in, you know, 24, 25, be competing for national championships. So that's that's what I want to see. Uh, get a question from Ethan Tremblay who asks, Realistically, how many more defensive players are needed to fill any current holes on the defensive side of the ball? He says, by my estimation, we need at least two more defensive tackles, a cornerback, and another linebacker. Your thoughts? Um, yeah, defensive tackle, you hit the nail on the head. I, I would also say Miami needs another safety or two because you lost some in the transfer portal, and you know, you're not getting a whole lot in in the class of 2023. Linebacker, um, I... I you know, with, I, maybe I look at linebacker as less of, of a priority than you because I, Miami's got a huge incoming freshman class of linebacker, and I think some of these guys can compete to get some playing time right away. And I like Wesley Besaint heading into his sophomore year. And you know, I know some of you don't want to hear this, but Corey Flag is still there. Um, you know, you lost uh, Caleb Johnson at linebacker, obviously, but I, I think Miami can inject some youth into their linebacking core, and they can be okay from that. But I definitely think defensive tackle and safety. So I, I don't know. I think Miami needs probably at least three or four more quality rotational pieces at the very least to make their defense competitive. I think basically they're in really good shape at edge and everywhere else they could probably use a little bit more help if that answers your question. I just had to take another sip of water before I answer the next one. Man, I didn't realize I was this sick. Like again, like I, I got a cough, the whole thing. Ah, pray for my voice the next few days because I do not want to lose it. I do not want to lose it. Got a question from John Van. It's a very sneaky hypothetical here, John. He says, would you give a non-refundable $500,000 signing bonus to a high school kid before he qualifies to come to the school you represent? Or would you wait until he qualified academically before you made that type of an investment. I mean, okay, John, I, I love, I love the way you tried to sneak this one in there. Uh, so many assumptions are being made. He's clearly talking about Cormani McLean. Guys, th there's a lot of people out there who claim to know what's going on. I see a lot of rumors about, oh, it's his ACT score or his SAT score or. Uh, one of the rumors I've seen is that his his former high school, Lake Gibson, because he left Lake Gibson for Lakeland, his former high school screwed him over because they didn't send his transcripts properly to Lakeland. I even heard somebody say that it's Florida. The Gators are like sabotaging his transcripts and they're saying, hey, if you sign with Florida instead of Miami, we will release your transcripts. But if you sign with my we're not going to release your like, I, there's so many conspiracies. I don't know who knows anything because he, here's what I've learned covering the Cormani McLean situation. The more we hear, the less we know. Seriously, the more we hear about what's going on with McLean, the less we know because everybody has a supposed insider report and all the information conflicts with the other information. Like, is he solid to Miami, but he's got an academic issue? Or is he wavering? Is he considering offers from Colorado and Florida? Is that why he's wavering? So much information comes out, guys. I don't want to jump to any more conclusions about what's going on with Cormani. I just, you know, I, I know Miami would still love to sign him in February. Um, we'll see what happens. But uh, a very, a very cheeky question. I appreciate you, John. That's a good job there. Uh, oh, man. I don't even know if I have time to address this one. We're going to do it anyway, guys. Overtime. We're going to go into overtime for a couple minutes because Biggie asks me, who do we think will be the starting offensive line next year? Biggie, I am delighted to tell you I don't know who the starting O-line is going to be because Miami has eight or nine guys who are capable of starting at five positions. On paper. Again, on paper. <laughs> so we know that based on their time at Oregon – 
Cristobal and Mirabal, they love to rotate a lot. Like they like to have a 10 man rotation at offensive line. So you look at left tackle, we could see potentially Zion Nelson, if healthy, starting at left tackle or Samson Okunlola could start at left tackle or JV on Cohen could maybe start at left tackle at left guard. I, I would like to see maybe Jalen Rivers, who has multiple positions he could start at, but Javion Cohen will probably end up starting at left guard. The transfer from Alabama was one of the best left guards in the country the last couple of years. Zero sacks given up in over 1,600 snaps. Lawrence Seymour, the big baby, is also an option there at left guard. At center, Ja'Kai Clark or Jalen Rivers, who I love. Jalen Rivers, I think, is good enough to start at center. Uh, Ja'Kai Clark uh, was the primary starting center last year. At right guard, We've got Big Coop, Inez Cooper, who's a mauler. Francis Maui Goa can also compete to start at right guard. And then at right tackle, that's another spot Maui Goa could start at. Or Zion Nelson, if he doesn't get the starting left tackle job, could get the starting right tackle job. Bottom line is, guys, Miami's offensive line, again, on paper, the offensive line looks to be much deeper and much improved from a year ago. And that'll do it for today's episode. Like any other day, if anything big happens today or if anything breaks today, we will cover it. Emergency episodes are always a possibility here on Locked on Canes. And I hope everyone had an amazing Christmas, an awesome holiday season. You're gearing up for the new year coming up. Hug your kids, hug your wives, husbands, hug your your moms and dads, aunt and uncles. And, uh, and yeah, let's keep the holiday spirit going here on Locked On Canes. Thank you for making us your first listen. Now make sure you make Locked On Sports today your second listen. Peter Bukowski brings the biggest stories from around the sports world in 20 minutes. Get the analysis and opinions before anyone else with our local and national experts and insiders. Locked On Sports Today podcast available on YouTube and wherever you get your pods. We'll talk to you again next time on another episode of Locked On Canes. We are part of the awesome Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.